start it? Yep, you oh, Okay. <laughs> Hi everyone, it's Lucy here, your local Kazaz lady. <laughs> now, normally I'd be making you a cup of chino at the moment. You'll be all sitting around my table, but I'm coming to you from my kitchen today. So please, this is my first go at this, so please be patient with us. If I'm talking too fast or I'm going too fast or you've got any questions, please feel free to just type them in the comments section. And my beautiful husband, Brendan, is here because he's working from home at the moment. So just please, you know, let us know if we're moving too fast. So welcome to a bit of crafty fun. I can't make you a cappuccino, but I can share some messy crafty fun with you. So let's get started. So I'm hoping Bren's got things in the right place and that you can all see this. So, first of all, I just wanted to show you um, our new stencils. So these are our new stencils. So we're going to have a little bit of a play with these today, this morning. So they're the new stencils that have come out in March. So you can just see they're quite beautiful and I've absolutely fallen in love with this as you may understand when I'm finished this demo. So First of all, I wanted to show you, and also our Distress Sprays. So they're the other new item that's come out in March. So we're gonna use a couple of these today. So there's just a couple of the colors, but there's a ton of colors. So if you want to know anything more about them, um, please just feel free to comment and I'll try and answer your questions as I can. So the first thing, gesso, I've been using a lot of texture paste, but gesso, I've forgotten about, but came back from overseas. As you might know, our Norway trip was cut very short and we didn't get to Italy at all. But gesso is a great, um, another great medium to use and to add to your projects. So what I find one of the great things is using it as to alter the paper. So as you can see here, this was the original card. These are our old moment by moment cards that have now retired, but I've got a ton of them. So if any of you want them, um, but I, one of our lovely consultants, Tanya Balastrin, has come up with some great ideas on how to use them and turn them into little inspiration cards. So this is what, um, this is what I was gonna show you today just how I've made these so you can alter your, your papers so if you've got those horrible ugly papers you know we've all got a stash full of hundreds of papers and you go back and you look at them and you think why did I buy that just simply by adding a bit of gesso you can see how these have been altered so this card has just had gesso swiped over it and then it's had layer upon layer put over it. So this card has turned to this and then has turned to this. So you can see the changes that have taken, taken place. This card here is also the same thing. So it's had a layer of gesso put over the top of it and then stenciling and more layers put on top of it. So gesso is a great medium. Again, here's another card that we've started off with this card and then gessoed and stenciled, and then we've ended up with this card here. So I was just gonna demo this technique for you. So we're just gonna start off with a bit of white card and some gesso and my trusty paintbrush here, which I do have here. I'll just grab it. Oh, there it is. So in this case, you're just gonna slap it on. There's no great technique in it. Just slap on some gesso. Actually, we're gonna do it on the card so you can see how it comes up red. 
how the red is dulled down. So you're just going to chuck it on like that. Then, with the little stencil, I'll use the heart because I quite like that. Just going to plonk it on. And then, with our little wipes, we're just going to wipe. So you're getting that dulled down. You can still see the little sentiment in the background and then you've now brought the hearts on. So again, it just creates a nice background. And then as you can see here, I've gone on, I've highlighted some of the hearts and then I've added a bit of stamping, a sentiment and our new die cut flowers. So these are some of our new double sided die cut flowers which I'll explain them a little bit more to you in a little while and demonstrate them on the mini Gemini. So with this one, the next little technique I wanted to show you is again using the hearts, which I'll just pop them in some water just to give them a clean off. So it's nice just to have a tray of water handy. So again, I've just slapped on some gesso to that one. So that's going to dry, but I've got one prepared that I prepared earlier. And we're just going to use a bit of dilution paint. So we're basically going to create this background here, which you can see then I've turned into this card here. So I'm just going to wipe off a little bit of paint and we're just going to slap that on just very roughly and then some green doesn't matter if it overlaps just chuck it on And then with our little heart stencil again, we're just going to pop that on and with our little wipe again, just going to wipe. So you can see how easy and effective that is. Then we could stamp on that if we wanted to. When I've spent time creating a, um, a background, I then want to be able to stamp so that it's it's going to come out. I'm not going to stamp and then it goes, I go, oh no, I've spent all that time and now the stamping hasn't worked out. So I'm going to pop it on the precision press. So I want it, now this is buckling. So what I'm going to do is just put a little bit of tape down the, down the middle so that it stays in position. Then I'm going to test where I want it. So I'd like it about, about there. So then you're just pressing the precision press down to make the stamp stick here. Now what you can do too, it's got a grid on it. So you can make sure that you're um, your writing is lined up straight so that everything looks nice and straight. Then we just ink it up. And press down. Now, as you can see here, it hasn't inked up properly. But because we've put it on the precision press, we can just keep going. Give it a good press down. And there we go. We've got a lovely image that's come up really nicely now. Now we could add a little bit more stamping 
to that. So I really like this serendipity flowers. So we're just going to put a little bit of that, add a little bit of that around the edges as well. So you can see same background, different stamps to create two different cards. Now, the other little thing I wanted to show you is how you can get texture with gesso using tissue paper. So again, I've got a little bit of tissue paper that I've cut down previously. And we're just going to use our gesso again. Just again, popping it all over. Scrunching our piece of tissue paper up. And then just laying it down. doesn't matter if it doesn't go completely to the edges or if it's hanging over the edges a little bit. Now you want a little bit of texture on that. So I don't know if you can see that, that the texture's nice and rough. And then you're just going to paint over that just to seal it, just to help it stick down properly and just to give it another prime. You're going to pop the gesso over the top of it again. And then just allow that to dry okay so we'll just put that aside to dry because i've got another one here ready to go so as you can see these cards that you've been working on do tend to get a bit bent but that doesn't matter that's all good all okay Is the tissue paper cut to the same size as the card, says Elaine. Um, I've cut it, I tend to cut it just a, a fraction bigger, but again, it doesn't really matter because I tend to edge um, the card with, um, with an ink blending tool with some sort of ink afterwards, and then the edge picks up that, that colour. So it doesn't really, really matter. But if you do what I, if I've got some hanging over, I then, like you can see here, I've got a little bit hanging over. And as you can see, you can use your gift vouchers for card making as well. Um, I just trim that off. So you can just trim it off easily if it's hanging over the edge or if it's not hanging over the edge, it doesn't really matter. It's part of the, the messy fun, I feel. So I thought we might just use um, the Distress Sprays for this. So if any of you know me, you know I'm a purple girl. So I'm going to spray on this. I'm going to spray directly onto the card. And I've got to go blue. So I forgot to shake the purple up, but it still, it still seems to have come out quite nicely. I find again with these, because they've got a powder in them, you need to give them a side to side shake rather than up and down because I find otherwise you block your you block your little spray. Now if it's blocking, just give it a little and it starts again. Now we can leave that like that to dry off or you could heat it with a heat tool to then maintain that colour or we can um, use some paper towel and we can dab it off. So we can just, if you want it nice and bright, so we can dab it. And again, it picks up the, the, um, the texture of your paper towel. Or you can just give it a rub if you want to have a more muted piece of card. So again, it just depends on what you're trying to achieve, what effect you're, you're wanting. And again, just stamping 
on top of that. So here's another piece that I've done. I've actually gone over it with, you can just see just very gently on there, the little heart stencil again. Here's another background that I've created using the same techniques and then stamping on it. So really it's just up to your imagination. Then the last little one I wanted to show you is this little card. Oops, upside down. So is this little card here. So you can see again I've used it. Oops, I'm going upside down these days. Upside down is the new the new right way up. So um, you can see here I've used the, the flower stencil and I've used the, the gesso with it. So what we're going to do is just again grab a piece of card, we're going to pop on our stencil and we're just going to use the little palette knife and the gesso and then just slap it on. No finesse about this at all. Now the difference, people often say to me, what's the difference between gesso and texture paste? The difference is that I'm going to actually put that, because I've got gesso on that side, so I'm actually going to put it on here. And I'm just going to brayer it on to get the, the negative image of that. So you can see there, it hasn't come out very clearly, but if I let that dry and then spray it, those white areas of the gesso will then resist the colour. So that'll be interesting to see what that turns out like. So I've slapped that on there, so leave that to dry. If you could heat it, with um with a heat tool but i find it tends to bubble and puff up but again that's quite a cool technique as well so have a play around with it and see what you think so i should have one here ready to go which i'll do here are some other little samples that i've been playing around with this sample um i've done again with the oxides with the um fossilized amber fired brick and spice marmalade. So I've let that one just sit on the gesso and dry itself. This one I've wiped off. So I've used the exact same colors, but you can see the difference um, in the two. So it just, again, it depends on what you like the look of. It's all about you really, or what the person that you're creating this for likes the look of. So what I did to get to get the colour onto this onto this flowery gesso, I actually did use the um, the gel mat. So we can spray directly onto this. Muggle is just getting a little bit locked up. And then I'm turning that directly in and just picking it up. So just down and up, just getting as much colour on there as you're happy with. I just want a little bit more blue. So you can see there, and I've still got a few little bit of white area there. Now, like I said, if you wanted more white area, like the orange card here, then at this stage you'd wipe it off. But I'm quite liking the look of that, so I'm gonna leave it like that. Now while you've got that there, you could then um, do some more. So I've got some other things here, so you can pick it up and on a piece of card and not waste that ink. 
and then put that away for later. I think I've got more ink on me than I have on the card at the moment. There you go. But I did say it was messy fun. You can always use gloves, especially if you're listening, Miss Sue. Okay, that's that. And I'll just bring my my messy sheet back again. Now gesso does dry reasonably quickly, so just make sure you're popping your palettes, your palette knives, and your your brushes and your stencils into some water um, soon after you've used them. So here's one that I've sprayed earlier this accidentally got a little bit of orange on it as well but such is life so what we're going to do is um make the little the little flower so i'm using the little gemini and this is one of our new little products it is so cute and it just um suctions beautifully to the craft mat Um, we've got another question can I ask what the name of the orange colors you used yes the orange was spiced marmalade um, and fossilized amber and I'm pretty sure it's fired brick that was the um, the third one but I'll make sure um, Elaine and I'll message you because I can't quite remember but I think it was fired brick um... So then our double side dies. I'm absolutely loving these. They're very nice to work with. And they go through the mini beautifully. So the mini is great if you've got a confined space, if you're going away on a scrap retreat or an evening crop and you want to take a dye machine with you. And I've got purple all over it. Um, it's a great little compact tool to use. It also can um, you can also buy a little storage bag for it as well. So what I've done is just cut down the black. These die cuts are also great for um, I lost my train of thought for using up all your little scraps. You know those scrap bits of card that you've got. So here's a scrap bit of card here so it's got two sides so you've got the first side and then you've got the the over the top piece so this is the where it's matching the black side and then this would be the white side so I'm putting that down and I'll put the little um, the little center piece down so for that I want I'm gonna put that there then I want the little leaf stem and then I'm going to put the white card on top just fold it up that it off I've, that was good I've made the black just a little bit too wide so you just cut that off a bit and we'll start again so that And the white on top. Squish it. And plump it in. And then just hold and wind on through. And cuts perfectly. So there's your black base. Your white. Oops. It will come out. Just got to lever it up. There we go. Just poke it out. 
So that's just going to a bit of tape in the middle. And then just matching it up. So I find if you look for this little knob here and that fat one there, it will match up. Now you don't need to, I find when I first did these, I was trying to stick all of these little bits down, but it actually looks quite nice if you leave these little bits sticking up. So I'm not fussed about having everything completely secured down. Now we've got the little centerpiece. And I find using these little bits and pieces, it's easy to attach them with the Crafters Companion tape. So this, I don't know if you can see it, but it's actually made up of a lot of little dots. So it goes over the over intricate die cuts really nicely and it doesn't pick up, the glue doesn't go across it. It only sticks to the card. So with this, lining it up, you're just looking for this little nozzle bit here and the other little nozzle bit, and then that will line that up perfectly. And then just a piece of tape on the centre. Putting your flower down. And there you go, you got it. And for the little leaf. And the black little centre part. So again, that's really fine. So I find this is where the Crafters Companion Tape Runner does really well. So if you just plonk it on and then just run it up there you go now we just want to need a little sentiment for this so I find people often say to me I find really hard to stamp properly to stamp evenly so what I find is if you put your little block on your craft mat if you don't have blocks that have got grids on them if you put on your craft mat and then put your block your stamp on your block you make sure that your your stamps lined up with the lines so you know that those words are straight on there when you turn it over your stamp might not be straight so don't look at the stamp look at the block so that when you stamp, that was good, wasn't it? I'll try that again. So that when you turn it over, now what you're doing is looking at the edge of your block. You're not looking at your stamp and you're looking at the edge of your card. So that when you put it on, you've got equal distance Oh, and I'll put edges on it. Let's try it again. Down this end. That's better. Now, if I get my trusty little guillotine, I love this guillotine. 
we can just trim that trim that up nicely and then just matting it with a bit of black So I mat it so that I've got two edges that I'm happy with and then all you need to do is trim the other two edges. Beautiful. I do love that guillotine. Okay, so then just putting the card together, all you're doing is... Look at the mess on the back of that. That could be a card in itself. So we've just got that onto the card. Now it looks as if I've got some orange ink on that somehow, so I'm just going to... Oh, there we go. So you can see the difference between that one and that one. Same, same inks used, but I've just wiped them off. And then tape... back of that. I should have put a clean sheet down, shouldn't I? Tanya made a comment. Ah, oh, yeah, Tanya, they are great. I'm loving them. Absolutely loving them. They're so versatile and like with the mini, I couldn't believe they'd go through the mini Gemini, but that makes it even, even better, I think. Here we go, clean piece of paper. Now, I was telling you before that I love the precision press for the ability to re-stamp stamped images, but the other cool little thing it does is it gives you a great guide for making sure that your cards are folded straight. So if you've got your precision press out, it's a great tool to use for that as well. So here's another little card too that I've made using the um, this flower. And I think I showed you the other little one. So that's the other, one of the others. So the, I think there's about five different flowers. So there's a rose, there's a peony, um, there's a dahlia, and this is the cosmos. Just popping that on. Get a bit of mounting tape on the sentiment. And a bit of mounting tape. I just use two. So this one, the um, flower's been put down the bottom, but I'm actually going to put it up the top because I'm going to make the sentiment, have the sentiment down the bottom. And then the little cosmos up the top. And then here's one that I prepared earlier <laughs> and some of the crafters companion tape again on the back. And the 
leave that in. So there's, there's the card. So that's really about it. I've got messy, look at that. Beautiful hands. So wear gloves if you don't want to want the mess. The other little thing that I just I remembered that I just forgot to show you was that this is an example of the rose. How did it do a second ago? The rose embossing, embossing stencil. So here I've sprayed, as you can see, the stencil with the sprays. Then I've actually turned it over and braid it down to get the negative. So that's how it looks with the sprays directly on. So I think that's it. I hope I haven't bored you too much. And please let me know if you've got any questions. Yeah, so just like or love it. And I look forward to any feedback that you've got for me. I'd be, I'd greatly appreciate. Um, there's also, I've got a couple of specials that are running. Yeah. So I might talk to you in person again. Hi again. It's still Lucy. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed that little demo. I've got a few little, um, specials. So this month, if you place an order with me, I'll give you... 10% of your total order. You can choose more Kazaz products from the catalogues or the flyers, or you can have a 20% 20 20 pick from my basket. So the basket's full and overflowing with gifts, so it's completely up to you. If you want to shop online at my web store, you can just go to the shop now button at um, in the top of my Facebook, Lucy's Kazaz at Bad Obey Facebook page or you can just phone me and give me your order. Email me, whatever you like. Hope you've, had, hope you've enjoyed it, um, have fun, and please give me some feedback. I'd love to hear what you think. Thank you, bye.